Okay, in this lesson, we're going to talk about shading your viewports. That's right. Now, you've already seen this on a very, very simple level. If a I were, limited scale. Yes, if I were to create something like a NURB sphere of fear in my scene, <laughs> and uh, we hit the 5 key, you'll see that we have a shaded viewport, and you know this now looks like a solid 3D object, as opposed to hitting 4, where all you see is the wireframe. Now, fortunately, this is only uh, you know, just below the surface of everything you can do as far as shading up sure. your viewport. Let me go ahead and create a couple more objects. We'll create a cube, and I'll scale it up, and let's go ahead and create a cone, and scale that up, and I'll move it a little bit, and a donut. Because you've got to have a donut. Got to have a donut. And uh, a <laughs> donut. donut, yes. And let's see, pull that off to the side. Here we go. Okay. You're working on a masterpiece. I know. I had to, to get the composition in there just right, have the nice diagonals and all sorts I of things you. like that. <laughs> so now if I hit 5, we are shaded. But we can also go under the shading menu, which is going to be the focus of this video. So let me go ahead and tear it off. While you are shaded, meaning not in wireframe, you have access to high-quality rendering. You'll notice now that I've hit 4 and I'm in wireframe mode, I you know, it's all grayed out. I can't touch high-quality rendering. Also, I should warn you, and I think we're going to mention this a little bit later, is that high-quality rendering will not work with all video cards. No. And uh, even on this video card, it'll slug things down a little bit. Uh, because we just have basic Lamberts uh, on our objects right now, it doesn't really look like anything special. In fact, it looks nastier than it did a second so ago. Your shading's a little bit tighter, if you if It you is. Will. It, and then we can hit three, and we can smooth out our objects considerably. And So what do we get out of high-quality rendering? Well, you're going to get some nicer feedback in the viewport in regards to what your image is going to look like, or what your objects are going to look like when rendered. Not a 100% accurate representation, but you're going to get a be better specular. Well, here, ignore ignore what I'm doing for just a moment. Oh, okay. Don't worry about this, because you'll, you'll be doing all of this by the time we're done. But let me put something on here that actually has some sort of specularity. So this is how specularity usually yeah. appears in the there viewport. There you go. This is what I was trying to get at. This big, ugly, Make white highlight. The, the specular color? Yeah. No, no, no. The, the actual uh, object. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can the do that. The sphere too. of fear. The sphere of fear. See, every time you say it, I have to repeat it back <laughs> with that evil voice. Maybe not quite so red. Yeah. So there we go. So there's our red sphere of fear with uh, a nice... I don't know, bright highlight on it, but that highlight is not necessarily a good representation of how this is going to look when rendered. Because if I hit render, you know, it's a lot tighter when right. you render, it looks a whole lot cleaner. And this is what high quality rendering is going to try to show you. It's going to show you a much closer representation of what you're actually going to get when you hit the render button. That's right. This That's can the, slow your viewport down. To a crawl and beyond. The more complex your scene gets, the more materials that are in your scene, please be careful when using this. That's right. So uh, let me go ahead and switch that off for now. Down underneath this, we have wireframe, which you'll notice is set to the hotkey of 4. We've been using it already up to this point. If I hit 4, everything appears in wireframe like so. Now, just a quick side note. You'll notice that all of a sudden, my uh, objects appear to have much denser wireframes than they did a second ago. That's because NURBS objects have three levels of display that you can hit the with them selected, of course. You can hit the 1 key, the 2 key, or the 3 key and see different densities of, uh, of display as to how sharp they're going to be. That's right. Appear. You don't have to worry about writing that down right now. For no. those of you that are note-taking maniacs, we will cover this in depth later on when we start talking about NURB surfaces. I just wanted to bring it up now so that just nobody's so they don't freaking go, hey, out. Why that, why that wireframe change? That's right. I'm just trying to put some minds at ease. Okay, so jumping back down under shading, we have smooth shade all, which is a lot like hitting the 5 key. Now, right now, everything is nice and chunky, and all i got to do is select it and hit 3 again. That's right. And there we go. So uh, now everything is nicely smooth shaded. These are the same thing as the hotkeys. Now we have some extra stuff as well. We have smooth shade selected items. This is nice. It's a mouthful. Switch that on, and everything goes to wireframe, and you think, oh, God, I broke it. I can't do anything with it, until you select something. And then whatever it is you have selected becomes smooth shaded. Very, very handy. I love that feature. Uh, down from here, we have flat shade all. And take a look at this. Faceted. Now, why is a NURBS object faceted? Don't worry about it right now. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, actually. <laughs> you can't truly see NURBS objects in yes. your viewport. They're polygons. <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute. I can see them right now. No, you can't. 
<laughs> well, who are you going to listen to, your eyes or us? So, uh, no, you can't see NURBS objects for real in the viewport. No, so what you see is polygons. Yeah, NURBS are handled mathematically inside memory and, of course, with the CPU. When it Good enough. Them. Good enough. We're not going to turn this into a NURBS discussion. But for the viewport, you've got to convert them over to polygons first. <laughs> Silence, mortal! <laughs> All right, good enough. So uh, let's go ahead and move on from flat shade all to flat shade selected items where only the selected item becomes flat shaded. It is amazing. That's right. You can select two, count them, two objects at a time. For just 19 <laughs> For just nineteen ninety five, and if you act now, we'll throw in this free NURBS cone, <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> so there you go. So there's flat shade selected items. You now have bounding box. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that is exactly what it says. It is a box that bounds your object. If you have a super duper ultra mega episode three quality complex scene and you just can't rotate around it, or if you happen to be running Maya on an Atari two twenty six hundred, <laughs> and if you figured out how to do that, please call me and let me know. Uh, then. And yeah, you may want to set this down to bounding box so you can see what's going on. Of course, when you uh, render, everything will still look fine. This is just a viewport setting. Now, down from bounding box, we also have points. And this just shows you points that pretty much outline where your object's going to go. And uh, you can these will change along with the densities for NURBS objects. So there's one, there's two, there's three. And, um, wow, that looks... Kind of cool. That looks just like the Sphere of Fear from the first movie. <laughs> Very similar. You remember that? Yeah, the one scene with the... Yeah, the yep. computer simulation. Yep. Anyways, so, so <laughs> there's like two people out there that know what we're talking about. So, uh, actually, probably a lot more than that. So down from here, we have uh, lots of other options. Let me go ahead and select something. We'll shade up the viewport, kind of look a little more natural. We have Use Default Material, which is pretty handy because I've applied a new material. If I switch on Use Default Material... All materials I've applied are completely ignored, and we basically, just for the purposes of this viewport, we reapply Lambert 1 to everything. So if you've got some super complex uh, materials that are just killing your viewport, switch them off. Go back to your default material. Uh, we have uh, wireframe on shaded. Now, that doesn't mean that it's gone forever. No, no, it's just, just a setting. It's a checkbox. That's right. Switch it on, uh, switch it off. And switch it on. I just wanted to make sure people didn't think that it. Oh yeah, no, it. it's not like a way to flush your right. materials or anything like that. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to flush your material, oh well, never mind. We'll talk about that later. Yes, we will. All right. We also have wireframe on shaded. This is super handy. I love this. And this actually shows your wireframe right on the surface of your shaded object. Comes in really handy when you're modeling. So down from here we have. Let me kill that. We have X-ray. What can you guess what this does? It allows you to see through stuff. The see throughness is quite yes. nice. Yes, we have adjusted the see throughness of our object so that now <laughs> we can see through everything. And uh, down from here, we have transparency sorting. And what this is going to do is draw objects based on their distance from the camera. Now, with something this simple, you're not even really going to be able to tell the difference because they're all being drawn pretty much instantaneously. Now, uh, later on, that could be a real major thing as to whether or not you see some objects being layered on top of others. Yeah, and you can just tell that the drawing order is wrong. Yeah. That can fix that. So that'll just switch that but on. But it just means it'll slow your viewport down just a tad. Just a bit. All right, down from here, we have interactive shading, or the make my viewport not go slow when I rotate option. <laughs> And what this does, basically, is while you rotate your viewport, everything switches over to wireframe. And Why? you have control as well inside your... There's an options box. Absolutely. And if you jump into the options box, you can choose what you want stuff to change into while you're rotating. Would you like it to be wireframe? Would you like it to be a bounding box, like so? <laughs> exactly. Would you like it maybe to be, I don't know, points? No, not bounding box, but points. So here we go. And again, this is going to be super important, like, uh, you know, if you've just redone like the subway scene from the matrix and it's really really hard to rotate around you can set it up to where as soon as you try to rotate the camera everything switches over to something simpler to facilitate faster camera motion that's all all right down from here we have back face culling now what on earth is back face culling well i can't show you unless i do some stuff that you have to promise me wait no okay yeah i was about to say i, I have a cone wait to see how you're gonna do well this. i was gonna i was gonna chop the sphere in half and look up inside of it oh i see but we don't have to do that because we yeah. can actually see up the uh, up the cone skirt so <laughs> <laughs> so uh let's see we have back face culling as soon as i switch this on you can no longer see the back faces of this object nice every polygon object 
is going to have a front side and a back side. And we kind of intoned a little earlier that these uh, are NURBS objects, but they actually render out as polygons. So we're, uh, we're basing everything on the rules of polygons. With back face culling on, you can see the front or positive side of a polygon. You cannot see the negative, which is cool but can also be a little confusing. This is also kind of interesting when you switch on X-ray mode with this. Like, watch this sphere really, really closely as I switch back face culling off. It darkens up a bit. That's because now you can see all the back faces to it. The, cu the cube also is also going to be a really solid way to see how this is working, because, like, you can kind of see the suggestion of the back oh, face sure. here. And then if you switch on back face culling, boom, yeah. it's all gone. So you can tell what that's doing. Let's go ahead and kill X-Ray, and we'll kill back face culling. Smooth wireframe is a really, really cool option that I think gets completely overlooked and ignored. Uh, when you switch this on and go to your wireframe view, your wireframes, whether you realize it or not, are a lot smoother in your viewport. It's like the lines themselves have been anti-aliased. And uh, you can switch that on and off and notice the difference. It's going to be really apparent with those lines that are either almost vertical or almost horizontal. Might be kind of hard for you guys to see after the encoding process. Yeah, so just, just play with it on your own. Look at it on your own computer. What's going to happen is the lines are going to appear to thicken up just a tad, and what that is is just kind of like anti-aliasing kicking on just for the grid lines. It looks pretty cool, though. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it, but it will slow your viewport down just a tad, so keep that in mind. All right, down from here, we have the ability to switch on hardware texturing, which right now isn't going to help us at all. So I get to do some other thing that, for now, you guys can completely ignore and not worry about. I'm going to apply a texture. So right now, I just applied a checker texture. Do we see it? No, no, we don't see it. And there's a couple of ways I can make it so we can see it. I can come under the menu and switch on hardware texturing, like so. Or I could just simply hit the six key on my keyboard, and now we see textures. Awesome, beautiful. Down from here, we have hardware fog. Now, this is kind of cool, but it's like, you know, you probably won't be using it that much. What this does, it's kind of like depth fog from older video games. As you get further away, objects kind of fade away into the so-called mist, and you can kind of see the outlines of them as they get drawn in. But, I mean, if you need a quick representation of what fog might look like in your scene, then you've got it. It's very, very simple, very basic. Uh, it's not going to be anything super, uh, you know, hardcore. But it is there. And if nothing else, it's something to keep you entertained if you're like me and you're amazed <laughs> by the simple. So there you go. The last option we have under this menu is apply current to all. What on earth does that mean? So let me switch on, well, maybe not x-ray, but let's switch on wireframe on shaded. Let's turn on hardware fog, and let's pop open a four view. If I come under shading and say apply current to all, those same settings are applied to everybody. So it's just a way to send your settings out. Really, that is everything that I want to handle inside of this menu, which is going to wrap it up for this video. Again, lots of things in here to make your life easier while you work. So get in and use these, especially things like wireframe on shaded and things like x-ray. So with that, it's going to wrap things up. Thanks a lot.